Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, President of Trident Concepts, and today I want to talk to you about some important considerations for concealed carry. One of the things that I talk about is if you're going to choose to carry a firearm, there are some things that you want to make sure that you are doing. Probably the first one is kind of like the most obvious one, which is to get a license to carry. Now, many states do not have that as a requirement. So the second part to that is know the law. And that's one of the things that I have found to be super valuable here is that getting a license to carry from a state approved entity is going to provide you with a lot of the legal aspects, which I find to be very important for obvious reasons, but also a lot of people are reserved about moving into carrying concealed because they don't know the law. Well, that's one of the reasons why getting your license is so important because that's part of the process is to familiarize yourself with the law. After you've gotten the license, what's the next best thing? Well, for me, it's to really reflect on yourself and reflect on your desire to carry a firearm. You're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to carry that firearm? And if I am going to carry that firearm, am I ready to use that firearm? So carrying the firearm is one thing, but realize that you're carrying it because you may be called upon to use it, right? So that's the real question that you need to be asking yourself. Am I prepared to use deadly force? Now, before you get all wrapped around the axle, the first thing I want to tell you is that your life and everybody's life that is important to you is valuable. That's the first thing that you have to recognize and acknowledge that your life has meaning, is valuable, it's worth protecting. Your family's life has meaning, is valuable, they're worth protecting. So when you take that as your first step, okay, my life is valuable, my life is worth protecting, what am I willing to do? Well, if somebody's willing to take my life, I'm willing to protect my life at all costs, which means that if I employ deadly force, the chance of them dying is there. But I don't control that because I wasn't the one who instigated the violent criminal act. Right? So that's an important thing that you have to really kind of discuss with yourself because if you're not ready to use the firearm, it may not be a good idea for you to carry the firearm. There's a lot of other options that you might consider in that case. But if you are ready to carry the firearm and if you are ready to use the firearm, the next thing we talk about is firearm familiarity. Be familiar with that firearm. Know how it works, know how to safely operate it, and then of course know how to use it. So that's marksmanship. That's the next thing is put some time and energy into developing that marksmanship skill because what I tell people is that you don't know what you don't know. You may think that this is something that's kind of easy, but ask yourself, was it easy for me to get into a car and start to drive? It probably wasn't. So it's probably going to be a little bit more challenging to actually be good with a firearm. Take the time to practice that. The next thing that I talk about is once you have kind of gotten to that level, carry as frequently as you can, but the real thing is about carrying with a round in the chamber. So when we talked earlier about carrying the firearm and being ready to use a firearm, it brought us to this point, which is carrying with a round in the chamber. Now, I know that seems somewhat obvious, but it's actually become a little bit of a trend for people to carry a firearm without the round chambered. And the reason being is that they feel like they're a little bit safer. Well, we're gonna go back to the previous topic, which is if you are ready to use the firearm, there shouldn't be a reason why you can't have that firearm ready at its highest level, which would be around in the chamber. The reality of you being able to actually draw the gun, charge the gun, and be able to still use it in a timely manner is not realistic, and you just have to accept that. There is a litany of reasons why that can't happen, but the bottom line is that if you're not carrying around in the chamber, then you probably haven't really addressed that other question about carrying and using the firearm. Once you have made the decision to carry that firearm with a round in the chamber, now we're kind of where we need to be. And then it's just about carrying as frequently and often as you can. But one of the things that I encourage people to do is to help build that confidence and comfort level, carry in your own home. Before you move out into the real world, it may be something that you just want to do in your house. Just a couple hours here and there after work. Do that for a couple weeks, a couple months. Before you know it, you're feeling a little bit more comfortable about how it rides, how the weight kind of affects you. Maybe you're learning that it's not as comfortable as you thought, or maybe you're learning that it's more comfortable than you were thinking. All of these things are great, and they're in the safety of your own home. Fantastic way to do this. And then, as you move into the streets, you'll feel a little bit better. You'll feel less worried, less apprehensive about somebody else thinking, oh my God, he's got a gun. Believe me, people are probably not paying attention to you unless there's a reason to pay attention to you. So if you do a good job of concealing and you maintain a low profile, there's probably no reason for people to be paying attention to you. All right, so 
These are just some of the things that I really encourage people to think about before they actually make some uninformed decisions. Learn a little bit more, move forward informed. All right, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Would love to hear any questions or comments. Please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.